front and I, they were home here, but pray for them, okay? All right, if you have your, uh, did you start that? Oh, always let me know. I might do something dumb when I'm up. When I'm up but anyway, never mind. All right, let's go to, uh, remember, uh, uh, where well, I want to go tonight, just to, just to get started here. I want you to go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and let me remind you what we've been dealing with. We started dealing with the thought, who is a liar? Who is a liar? We, we started last week, I'm going to finish it tonight. And we, we talked about how Jesus said to, in John chapter 8, 44, he says to the Jews that, that would not believe in him, he said, you are of your father the devil. You are of your father the devil. And the works of the devil and the works of your father you will do. He was a liar from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Now remember when Jesus said he abode not in the truth, he's talking about, he's talking about uh, uh, the word of God truth. He's talking about God's truth. He would not remain in truth. Now remember we, we dealt with Proverbs 6, uh, Revelation 21, Revelation 22, and the Bible tells us God hates liars. Amen? Amen. God hates people that sit around and lie and say and tell lies. Period. Regardless of if, if it is a, a doctrinal lie or just a regular lie, God hates lying. Amen. But I want to bring something to you tonight because I want you to realize that in a lot of churches today, and not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean every church, but a lot of churches today, we're being lied to. Amen? We're being played, if you would. And, and especially uh, when they tell you that if you serve the Lord and if you, you give me a lot of money, God's going to make you rich. That's not true. Amen? Amen? And so they're playing you to take your money. As a matter of fact, the other day I listened to a guy who's pretty heretic in the way he teaches, but he said, if you don't start tithing, God's going to kill you. Well, that's not true. Amen. Amen. And that's not, now, during the COVID, a lot of people were suffering financially because they weren't working. So some of them, uh, they didn't have jobs anymore. And uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland came out, came out, and you can see the video on YouTube. He says, whatever you do, I know you don't have no income. Whatever you do, don't quit tithing. So God will bless you. Don't quit tithing. Well, the truth is, sometimes you can't. That's right. I mean, when things happen like that, that's an emergency. And you ought to consider the poor. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You ought to consider they don't have it. They can't, they can't do that. Uh, I, I know. And, and so we, we have to realize that we're getting, uh, we're getting all these. Uh, for example, there's a guy... He wear, he's a chubby, ugly guy that, uh, man, I'm telling you, uh, just just an uh, ugly guy. And he comes over here, and he has earrings all over his face. That's why I said he's just ugly in that sense. He has all kinds of stuff all over him. Uh, he wears uh, uh, biker boots when he's preaching, Levi's biker boots, and those uh, uh, tank tops or whatever you call them. So he gets up, and, and he says that he's preaching one day, uh, no, excuse me, he's praying one day about a lady in his church that just wouldn't get her act together. So he said, as I'm praying, God said to me, the next time that you see her, go up to her and kick her in the face. So he did. Amen. I can't remember the result, but I think he said she got saved or something like that. But anyway, he kicked her in the face. I said, how come God hasn't told me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but he said, kick her in the face, and he did. He just kicks the lady in the face. There's some of you. Never mind. Anyways, I'm just kidding. But then he, then he would stand like this. He, let, me, let me show you what he'd do. He's down there. He's got all these tattoos showing. And he's got all, uh, like I said, looks like a biker, no, a biker punk rocker at the same time. I don't know what he is. But he stands up there and he would go like this. Uh, first he started throwing something like, let's say I, I want Sister Petra filled with the spirit. Bam! He throws something at her and... Uh, Sister Petro, yeah, she, the, the people that he would, would catch that and fall over, shaking up, like, how dumb are you? Mm. Amen? Or well, he would just look at you and call your name, uh, and, and I'm glad, and, and I'm glad that, that, I, that I don't do this, but uh, uh, he would say, Jess, bam, and Jess would fall over. <laughs> really, that, that's what they do, stuff like that. That could be kind of fun, I think, to watch people doing that. <laughs> it'd be funny anyway. It'd be funny. It ain't of God. It ain't of God at all, but it would be funny. Amen. Just uh, stuff like that that we see over and over and over again. Or teaching you how to speak in tongues. The pastor stands up here and says, okay, now let's all do this. And you're all making noises, making noise the way he's making them. And pretty soon you're supposed to get the gift of the Holy Spirit and start going bananas. That's, that's what we're being lied to people. Amen? Uh, rock concerts in the church. Rock concerts in the church. Worldly music in the church. I mean, you can go on and on. 
uh, let me say this to you. The church and the world are to be separated. Amen? Amen. The church ought not to have anything to do with, and, the, and, and people should not expect the pastor to bring the world into the church. That's right. right. I, I was going to preach somewhere. I think Aaron was with me. With me. I was going to preach somewhere. I won't tell you where it was. And they were playing mariachi music. They're not going to impress me with that. That's bar music. That's dancing music. You're not going to impress me by playing a, a, a mariachi music and putting Jesus' name in there. Any more than you're going to impress me by playing rock music and putting Jesus in there. Any more than you're going to impress me by playing country and western and putting Jesus in there. It doesn't impress me at all. Why? Because the world is coming into the church and we're not watching this. We ought to watch that. Amen? Because Amen. it is coming into the church. Now, last week I said God hates lying. So I believe those preachers are just plain liars. Amen. They just, I mean, they're just lying to you. If they can get money out of you and let you do whatever you want, let you live like the devil and die and go to hell, they don't mind doing that. As long as they got money off of you and made money. Well, the, the church is not about how much money can the pastor make. Amen? It's Amen. about serving the Lord. That's Amen. what it's about, serving God. Now, let's start here, if you would. First of all, we said, and we said as we started here, we said a person that says, I know Jesus Yet walks in darkness is a liar. Now, we saw the scriptures. I'm not going to go through them. You can go to last week's video and see it. Uh, he is a liar. We said a person uh, that covers sin is a liar. All right? That's what the Bible teaches. And then we said a person that says that he, uh, a person that says that he loves the Lord, yet hates his brother in Christ, is a liar. Amen. The Bible says if your man says that he loves, uh, loves God and hates his brother, he is a liar. And there is no truth in him. Amen. So I uh, understand. Now, is, is this go, does this go on quite a bit? And we're going to start right here. Does this go on quite a bit? Yes. Now, I gave you the scriptures last week. You're going to have to go back to them. All right. But understand this, people. We are to love one another. Amen. Amen. The Bible teaches you are to love uh, other Christians. I am to respect you as a Christian. Amen. Uh, I was shocked the other day. I'm listening to a guy who kind of talks about church problems and this and that, but he only does like a 15-minute deal. And uh, uh, I met him years and years ago. Uh, he's an independent Baptist. I mean, I would not agree with him doctrinally, but he pastored for many years, and I like the way he teaches certain things. So I, I thought, I'm going to listen to him. So I subscribe to his channel, and he comes out uh, every Friday at a certain time, and he just teaches about 15 minutes and then closes the thing. He, he's not preaching or anything, so I'm just going to teach a few things about the church. One of the things he, he talked about, he said, sometimes he said, uh, people disagree with you. He said, but, but, uh, but if you want a bunch of yes men, you're not going to be able to church. You're going to have to have someone says, I think we're going the wrong direction. I, I think we shouldn't do this. I mean, uh, somebody has to say that once in a while. Amen. And by the way, the pastor should not get offended because someone thinks we're going in the wrong direction. Amen. I mean, you, you just say, well, I don't know if this is right. And, and of course, the preacher ought to at least pray about it. And by the way, when you come, uh, let's say you come into my office and you sit down and say, preacher, can I talk to you about this situation? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, come on in. You sit down and you say, well, I just don't think that this is right or I don't think we ought to be doing this. I don't, I, I, my, my job is to listen to you. My job is to pray about it, and if God uh, continues to deal with me, I'll go the same direction. But if God says, you know, they're right, then turn the direction. Amen. I turn the direction. Why? Because to be honest with you, uh, I don't know everything. I'm not the wisest man in the world. Sometimes I need help. Amen. I need someone to say, let's stop right here. I think we're going wrong. Let's, let's do this instead. And I think it, I think it helps. Now, uh, a pastor, as I said, doesn't need a bunch of yes men. Now, somebody might say, well, you know, on the board, there's Aaron, and then there's, there's Paul. I got news for you. They're not yes men at all. <laughs> you better listen carefully. They're not yes men at all. If Aaron don't like some, he tells me, I, I don't think we ought to do that. I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. And then there's times when I have changed what I was doing because he said, I, don't, I just don't think that's the right thing to do. And when I changed it. All right, well, let's, let's see what, I said, what's your, what's your opinion? I said, well, Dad, what about this or that? And I said, you know what, that sounds a lot better. Sometimes Paul, for example, the camp out, we're planning some things, and I said, well, what are we going to do, Paul? He'll say, Dad, I, I don't really care for that idea. I, I don't think that's what we ought to do. And so I changed my mind on that. Okay, well, what do you think we ought to do? And they'll tell me, now, sometimes if I think I'm going right, I'll say, no, we're going to do it this way because I think we're, that's the best way to do it. 
I, I, and usually I'm right, by the way, just in case you want to know. No, I'm kidding. But what I'm saying to you is simply this. I understand what I'm saying to you is simply this. There's nothing wrong with you or me uh, disagreeing on something. I don't need to mistreat you for that. Right. Are, are you listening? I'm talking about the pastor. The pastor does not need to mistreat you for that. Right. I'm going to give you a little story. It's going to shock some of you, but, but the guy that told me say, uh, swore, swears that it's true. He told me one time, he said, I'm sick. He said, I've been back to it for about eight months. Having gone to church, been out drinking and uh, at the dances, my wife gets home and says, the pastor wants to talk to you. So I thought, well, he probably wants to talk to me about my soul. So he said, I agreed to go on a Sunday after service. I went to see what, what was going on. I sat down in his office. Me and my wife, he said, sat down in his office. Him and his wife were there. The pastor said to me, here's what the pastor said. He said, the pastor said to me, you haven't been tithing. I'm backslid. You haven't been tithing. He said, you know what? I thought you were going to talk to me about my soul. And here you are talking to me about money. You know, what the, you know what the pastor did? He got so mad at him, he threw a pin at him, almost hit him in the eye. Wow. Hmm. Now, if you don't think that happens, I got news for you. You have never been scolded by this pastor. But there are pastors that will scold you. And they'll let you know if you like it, don't like it, there's the door. They'll scold you. Amen? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just, that, that's just the way they are. Now, let, let, let's continue. We're to love one another. I'm to respect you. You know why? Because you are the anointed of the Lord. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. God has anointed you. Now, let, let, let me... Uh, how do I bring this up? How do I say this? Sometimes the church does things that I don't like. But I'm going to respect you for it. Amen? Did you see? Uh, 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 there's, one in, there's one where a, a lady's playing with her phone. The preacher's preaching. He gets off the stage, goes over there, grabs her phone, throws it on the ground, says, I told you to quit messing with that thing. And then keeps preaching. Sometimes a preacher needs to do that. Honestly. Amen. Sometimes he needs to do that. It's embarrassing to me. It grieves my heart really when people do that. I remember a lady stand up and to, her phone started to me went out the back door. Hello, talking on the phone. It got me so mad. I almost stopped the message and went out there and took her phone away. It's ridiculous. People, you're in the house of God. Amen. This ain't for you to be in your stinking phone. This is the house of God. Amen. This ain't for you to be playing with your phone. Amen. You're gonna send your 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 loved one or somebody here to hell because they see you playing on the phone. That's ridiculous. Right. Now I don't mean before the service. I mean once we start preaching, you need to turn that thing off. Amen. Right. Now let me finish up here. So first of all, remember there's a uh, there. If you hate your brother, the Bible says that if you hate your brother without a cause, then the Bible says that you are, you are in danger of hellfire. Let me give you the, another one real quickly. And then I'm, I got about two points and I'm going to have to close tonight. But let me say to you, there's another one I want to give you here real quickly. A person that denies that Jesus is Christ is a liar. Amen. Now notice what the Bible says here. Now let's go to the scripture here. In chapter 2 and verse 21. Chapter 2 and verse 21. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, I have written unto you because uh, you know the truth and because <clears throat> excuse, me. Uh, excuse me, I have written unto you because you know not the, uh, because you know not the truth, but because you know it. I'm not writing because you don't know, I'm writing because you do know. He says, uh, and no lie is of the truth. Uh, whoso, uh, who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus is Christ, uh, is, he is antichrist, and deny, that denieth the Father, and the Son, whosoever denies the Son, the same has the Father. But he that uh, but he that acknowledges the Son has uh, uh, the Son has the Father also. Now I'm, I want you to give you a simple thought here. Notice that he says, if a man denies that Christ is the the the, the Savior or the Messiah or, or Jesus is the Christ, that means Messiah, the Savior. He said he is a liar. 
So understand when you deal with someone and someone comes to you and they say, well, I just don't believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. They're saying to you, he's not the Messiah. He is the Messiah. Amen. Amen. And everybody that knows the Lord is going to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Now let's look at chapter four. So right here where we're at. When we deny Christ, the Bible says we're liars. In verse, uh, chapter, uh, chapter four, verse one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Rather, they are of God because many false prophets have gone into the world. Now, notice what he said. Many false prophets have gone into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Uh, every spirit that confesses that Jesus, uh, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh uh, is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And is the spirit of the Antichrist. Wherefore, we have, you have heard that it should come, and even now, already is in the world. Any spirit, or that is any person that, whose spirit is willing to deny Christ as, the, as, the, as the, Jesus as the Christ, he is an antichrist, amen? Uh, he is against Christ, and so the Bible says that he is a liar. Keep in mind that Jesus is our Messiah. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Amen. Jesus is also the liberator, the deliverer, which is what the Messiah means. The, the, the anointed one, he is the redeemer. He is the only way to heaven. Look at verse uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Right here where we're at. Chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that, that is, that, excuse me, that begat, loveth him that is begotten. Now watch what it says here. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You want to know how you know you're born again? When you believe Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. He is the Christ. A born again Christian cannot tell you there are different ways to heaven. Right. A born again Christian is going to say there's only one way to heaven. Amen. You know like when they ask Joel Olstein if Jesus is the only way, there's only one way. Well, I'm not, I'm not to judge all of that. God, God didn't put me to do all, say all those things. He starts giving it all that. I, I just, that, that's just not my, my, my calling. That's just not, well, if your calling is to preach the Bible, then you're supposed to preach the Bible. Amen. And if the Bible says he's the only way to heaven, I got news for you. He's the only way to heaven. Amen. There's not two ways. There's only one way uh, for you and I to go to heaven. So realize, first of all, a person that a person says, I know Jesus, and then he, uh, he walks in darkness is, is, is lying. A person that denies Jesus is the Christ also is lying. A person that covers up sin, the Bible says, is a liar. Every one of us need to confess sin. Amen. I won't go into that one. We did it last week. But every one of us ought to confess sin. A person that says he, uh, he's a Christian, but he hates his brother, that person is a liar. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you another one. A person... That a person that, that won't believe God's record is a liar. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. A person that will not believe God's record is a liar. Amen. Chapter 5, right where we're at. Chapter 5. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. <clears throat> chapter 5. It says this. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son has the witness in himself... Uh, he that believeth not, God has made him a what? A liar. Uh, in the eyes of the Almighty God, the creator of the world, you are a liar. God has made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. This is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. That's the record that God gave. God gave a record that in His Son is eternal life. Amen. The only way I can have eternal life is in Jesus Christ. That's the record God gave of His Son. That's right. I remember years ago I was out door knocking, and uh, and uh, a Jehovah's Witness got a hold of me, and he got to trying to argue with me, and I said he, I, I, he said to me he said let me ask you a question. Do you believe you're saved? And I said, yeah. So I, I showed him uh, Romans uh, uh, 10, 9 and verse 9 and verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the, uh, the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved, E.D., past tense. I said, you're saved. Not going to be, you're saved right there and then. He looked over at me and goes, I don't believe I'm saved. I said, we agree on that. Amen. You're not saved. <laughs> Amen? Because Amen. they're not. I said, you, we agree you're not saved. And then he said to me, I said, can I, can I read you a scripture? I said, I'm going to show you something. And I read him this. 
If you don't believe the record that God gave of his son, God says you're a liar. Amen. Well, I don't appreciate that. I said, I, I didn't call you that. God did. You have to take it up with him when you see him. Because he says you're, li you're lying to me. Amen. Because notice that he said here. He goes on again. Let's read, let's read again. In verse 9. Uh, if we receive the witness of... Uh, no, I'm sorry, where am I at here? Where did I start? Yeah, verse 9. Yeah. Uh, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. This is the witness of God which he has testified of his son. He that believeth on the Son of God has a witness in himself. I have the witness on myself because I know I'm saved because I trusted Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the witness in myself. Amen. He says, He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar because he believes not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. The only way I'm going to get eternal life is in, the, is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I read that to him, and I said, listen, you don't have eternal life because you've never repented and trusted Christ as your personal Savior. Oh, you believe that he's the Son of God. You believe he's Michael the Archangel. You don't believe he's God. You don't believe he's deity, and you don't believe his, that he's the Messiah, the Savior. I said, therefore, you're not, you're not even saved. And, and I'm going to say this to you. Anybody that says to you, well, I believe that you, you, you can kind of get right with God by trusting Jesus, but, that, but you can't know that you're going to heaven. He's lying to you. Amen. Because he didn't come to, to give us doubt. He came to give us assurance Amen. of our salvation. Not, well, I hope I make it. I had that before I got saved. I didn't need Jesus to say, well, I hope I make it. I already had that. Amen? Amen? Before we got saved, we kind of hoped that maybe that somehow uh, I was going to make it. Well, when a man truly repents, a man truly uh, receives Christ as Savior, then that man is saved. Amen. Now, when a man says he doesn't believe the record that God gave of his son, then the Bible says he's lying. Mm -hmm. let, let, me, let me give you my, my last thought here before I end up closing. I'll close early tonight. But I want, to, I want to share this with you, and most of us, most of you probably heard me say this, but I want to share this with you. <clears throat> when somebody, let's assume that uh, maybe you're out in, the, uh, out in the street somewhere, you're picking up your kids in high school. I used to pick up my kids all the time here in Alisa High School and uh, North Salinas, but let's say I'm in Alisa High School, and when I get there, there's an accident. I get out of the car, to, you know, I'm nosy like everybody else. I get out of the car, I want to get closer to go see what's going on. So I go over there, and there's a, a guy standing there, and I said, man, that's a mean accident. He said, man, I was right here when it happened. I said, man, what happened? Well, this car did this, and that car did that, and they hit each other, and man, they almost hit that kid over there. And he tells you this whole story. I'm going to believe him because he's saying, I saw the whole thing happen. Amen? You go, wow, really? Yeah, man, that's something else. And if you believe a man who's a liar from his mother's womb, the Bible says, why won't you believe God? Amen. 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 How many times a, a young man says to you, I don't believe in God, and next thing you know, they're getting saved somewhere. They were lying to you. Because man is liars. Amen? Men lie. Uh, how, many, how many times have you, have you seen uh, uh, some of these, uh, right now, some of these stars are starting to become one of these things where they think uh, salvation or, or Jesus is a great thing? I just saw, who was it? I can't remember the, the star. Uh, praying with some priest somewhere because he's looking for God and so on. You don't have to look for God. <laughs> Amen. All you got to do is uh, receive the Lord. That's all. You'll, you'll find him real quickly. But anyways, he goes on. He, he was talking about all that. How many times you, you heard, why, why do men tell you that? And, then they, and yet, all of a sudden, they say, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. And then they're dying and they're calling out for God. Why are they doing that? <laughs> because man lies. You know why I don't believe in God? So I can keep living in sin. That's the only reason. Amen. Amen. What was that? The, the, the illustration that Bobby Jackson told one day the evangelist, Free Will Baptist evangelist. He said, I went to go see a man who told me he was an atheist. He said, Oh, really? He said, Yes, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I used to be a Methodist preacher, but now I'm an atheist. He said, After I talked to him for a few minutes, he said, by the way, he said, I started off as being a Gnostic. He said, you do know what the Greek word for Gnostic means? He goes, what's that? He said, professing to be ignorant. That's what it means, and that's what it means. He said, that's, he, he said, he looked at me, he said, you know what? I don't have time to talk to you. He said, about that time, a 13, 14-year-old, now this is a 50-something-year-old man, 
A 13 or 14 year old young girl came out and they were living together as husband and wife. I said to him, this is what Bobby Jackson said, I said to him, you better hope there's no God. Amen. Because you left your wife for a 13, 14 year old girl, you better hope there's no God. Because if there is, buddy, you have it. That's right. You know why he was denying God? Because he's living with a, a, a young girl. That's why he denied God. He's living with a little girl, and he knew he wasn't supposed to. Amen? He knew he couldn't leave his wife for another one, and he did. And now he's living in sin. People, listen to me. The truth is, we can't deny Jesus is the most Amen. Right. He's the only way to heaven, and we've got to trust in that. Let's pray. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you'll just be with us, Lord, and watch over us. Help us, Heavenly Father, Lord, to learn the scriptures, to be able to walk.